Welcome everyone. You had questions for us. And today we're gonna freaking answer the damn We things. got the answers. We got the answers. We have an answer. We don't know if it's the answers you actually seek, but we are gonna answer your questions. To my understanding, this is a thing that channels do sometimes, so we figured we would do it with you. So let's just jump right in here. Um, question, and then I will also note that we're doing this in front of a live studio audience today. We've got about 15 people from our Patreon community out here shooting a red dot pistol class today which is thrilling. So uh, we have that. So if you hear hooting and hollering, <laughs> and if anyone throws panties at us or anything like that, <laughs> um, that, that, that would be the explanation. So question number one, let's see. Um, it, and there was a lot of questions. Yeah. We about 100, we whittled we this down to them. like maybe 15, 20. So let's see, why don't you read the first one? Uh, given your new experience with shooting competition, how do you compare it to taking a formal class? Part two, which do you think is greater value for developing pistol competency? Good question, man. That is a very good question. It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, I so, definitely do. I mean, we're taking this class with Mike Pannone, right? A uh, pretty well-known instructor, lots of competition stuff, some other military stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I think he'd probably be a good person to touch on this. He uh, says, sure. shooting is shooting. You apply the way you shoot in different scenarios depending on what is happening, whether mm -hmm. it's a competition or a tactical thing, right? Yeah. And I think that puts it best. They are not the same. Shooting is the same, but the circumstances are different. Yeah. I, I would say from a newer shooter perspective, if you said, hey, where am I gonna get the most value in terms of learning? I would recommend jump into a class versus jump into a competition on day one. 100%. It's like, look, a competition is still gonna, you have to have fundamentals to go shoot competitions. Like yes. you've gotta know how to clear a malfunction, how yep. to do a, a, a reload, how to reset a trigger, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I would say, hey, definitely in, in might take do a handful of classes before you start jumping into USPSA. Yeah. Um, but at that point, I think, hey, the competition will teach you a lot and, 100%. and probably, you know, make you a better shooter. Yep, I agree. So, and yeah. it doesn't have to be all like competition classes or tactical no. classes. You could do a mixture of both and then go from there. 100%. Right? All right, next question. If you had uh, one choice of a firearms company to buy everything from, which one would it be? I, I'm going to guess yours. You guess mine. I think... I believe, my guess is we're gonna have the same answer. You wanna say it on three? One, sure. two, three, HK. HK yeah. Okay, yep. well, so, that um, solves that. <laughs> yeah, and here's the reason why, because I thought about the question, I thought, hey, good question. The reason is this, if you had to buy everything from a company, you go, well, shoot, man, I'm gonna need pistols, pistols. I'm gonna need rifles. And sub guns. In a perfect world, sub guns. And you go, there's not that many companies that are reputable that make the gamut of things. Correct. HK makes good pistols, good rifles, yep. good sub guns. Yeah. So you go, uh, kind of a no-brainer for me. My runner-up was B&T. Just to be different from you. Because yeah. they got pistols, rifles, subguns. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, sure. I just have more time on HK, right? Yeah, so and, and they win on the pistol category. That's where they're going to shine over b Got that P30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, before we get any further, a uh, quick thank you to today's sponsor, uh, Segera, for sponsoring the video today. They make this. Um, since we're in range oh, kit, the you can uh, actually see what the we belts. wear. So you've got a battle wagon. I got a battle wagon. This is correct. Um, I've got an emissary belt, so this is really their kind of main EDC belt, but I'm not a big battle belt guy. So I wear the the, the more rigid uh, EDC belt uh, at the range and I just throw in all, all Pouches the Pouches and everything? Yeah, and then yeah. when I EDC, I do the Velcro inner light belt um, and that's very good. There's a code you guys can use. 1911 Syndicate saves you 10% off the whole freaking store. Check that out, support them, support us, support you. Put good belts on your hips, boys. You know, <laughs> that's it? That should be the slogan. Put for them the, belts on them yeah. hips. Okay, next question. Next um, one, which is one that I really like, okay? Mm -hmm. A beginner's guide to watch collection. Oh, boy. So, uh, this is gonna be budget dependent mm -hmm. and kind of what your end goal is. I think yeah, my journey through watches went from like dive tool watches to G-Shocks back to dive tool watches, right? Okay. Um, there's, I think there's two schools of thought with this. Save up and go with your grail piece. Your grail piece, mine being my Panerai, mm -hmm. being the piece that you like, that is your holy grail. Sure. And then work your way back, which is what I'm doing now. Sure. So, and I think there could be an argument for that. Or the other approach would be work your way up. Work your way up. Yeah. So, it kind of is dependent, I guess. I think everyone should have a good digital watch. So, G-Shock. Sure. A good tool watch, like uh, I'm obsessed with the Tudor Pelagos right now. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or Panerai or anything of that sort. Yeah. I think those two, if you start there, a good electronic and a good automatic, yeah. that'll, that'll cover a lot of bases for quite some time. Yeah. The only thing I would uh, add to that, because really there is no correct answer on this. It's correct. really a personal preference thing. 100% uh, stay within your means. Uh, don't start getting crazy where you're just like, dude, I got to eat ramen because I bought the watch now. Um, and then two, pick things that are lifestyle appropriate because I, I used to be a 
um, I wouldn't say a watch collector, uh, you know, upwards of a decade ago, but I had a, a respectable little collection. And um, eventually I wound up selling everything because they weren't lifestyle appropriate pieces anymore. Yeah. I was, my life was going a direction that was different than the dress watches and the things like sure. that that I had. And it just, you know, so, hey. Because that was back when you were bougie? Yeah. In suits you know, and shit? Yeah, suits and shit like that. Yeah. And, you know, so the reality is, hey, pick stuff that is lifestyle appropriate for you versus like they say you got to get a dress watch, I got to dress, I don't wear dress clothes. I don't, I don't need a dress, dress watch. watch. I, I, I don't need it, you know? So, hey, and just, some of those watches would fit in dress and normal attire. A hundred percent. So there you go. With the swap of a strap, even potentially. Uh, any thoughts or plans to review the new wave of 2011-ish style guns that are hitting the market, like the Stealth Arms, Oracle Arms, Alpha Foxtrot, Dan Wesson, DWX? Uh, the answer would be yes to the extent possible. Um, one thing, you know, that we're pretty upfront about on, on the channel is, as long as it's something that we... There's a lot of things we would like to review. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's a matter of access. Yeah. Like, do we have access to whatever that thing is? The so, company like, willing to work um, with us. Yeah, and, and, and this is no uh, shade that's being thrown here, but it's like, hey, I've reached out to Stealth Arms, and, the, you know, they, you know, just didn't need or, or, or want a review. You're like, cool, well, I, you know, I, I did my part, because the other reality is, hey, we can't buy everything. Uh, you, you know, it's like, hey, we're, you know, humans of, of limited means, so... You can't buy everything, and if the manufacturer is not going to send it to you, same with you know. Again, not not a shade thing, but Dan Wesson DWX. Like I've reached out to Dan Wesson, uh, but many occasions, uh, including within the past six weeks, and no response. You know, so it's like I can't make things happen that uh, you know we we can't get some cooperation to make happen. I can tell you, Alpha Foxtrot, that video will be coming, so that one is a yes. Beyond that, we're doing what we can. Oracle Arms, hopefully, we've had some communication. Hopefully, we'll see. Okay. As real estate agents, what got you into doing a gun tuber channel? My answer is they they went hand in hand. Yeah. The uh, we did both literally at the same time, using this as our platform to market for real estate. So like, it's not a horse before the cart. Like they were at the same time. Yeah, yeah. The gun content came as a means to try to market a real estate business that was uh, geared around law enforcement, military shooters, and and things like that. So really, yeah, the the, the two went hand in hand. Yeah. There, it wasn't a cart before the horse thing. It was like a strategy to try to do both at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the cheapest gun worth owning in your opinion? I'll say mine because I, I have a very uh, immediate response to this canic. So I would I would have said Glock, 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 but with how much canic has come onto the market and at the price point with what you get, like I've heard nothing but good things about canics. The few I've shot are pretty good. Oh, Is yeah. that too much? No, I was just pumped you guys were talking about canning. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, the videographer there loves, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so P Pannon rocks canics a lot of times. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've only seen him with the Glock and that C CX. Or... Uh, he, he rocks a lot of different stuff. Canic is one of them. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like, look, man, for the feature, for quality, price for feature, for price, canic is, in my mind, unmatched, uh, truthfully. And it's pronounced Jeanic, but... Is it really? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Eastern Bloc. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I call it Canic, but Canic. in a gun store, this dude was like, it's pronounced Zonic, and I'm like, nee. yeah. Yeah. Nee. yeah. Yeah. I don't blame you. I would have yeah. done the same thing there. Um, well, this one's probably a little more directed at me, a uh, beginner's guide to a bourbon collection. So this one um, is something I am pretty passionate about. I would tell you uh, <laughs> this. It's all gonna taste like shit at first, boys. <laughs> um, this is a, Just being honest. a labor of love kind of thing where eventually you're gonna develop a taste for this and you're gonna become to enjoy it. But until you get to that place, you're just gonna have to find ways to kind of power through the, the shitty phase. How long would you say that phase is? Well, here's how it's probably gonna go. You're gonna start by doing like mixers, right? The first thing where I was like, hey, I do enjoy this as a means to consume alcohol. I would take like a, a lemonade uh, iced tea thing that didn't have any calories and I'd put some bourbon into that. And I had kind of like this Arnold Palmer okay. thing going on. And I was like, hey, that's actually tasty. And then you kind of wind up going, uh, maybe what's the next thing that's more intense? You go, okay, some sort of mixed drink. And then you get to an old fashioned. Eventually you're like, man, I'm gonna just try bourbon in, on, on, the, on a rock, you know? Sure. And then eventually like you try something straight. But start with low proof. That's the biggest thing in my mind. Hey, start low totally. proof, uh, 80 proof, which is what we call barely, barely legal bourbon. Um, start there, cause it's gonna be what you would call smooth. And um, work your way up to the higher proof things with your focus being finding these three, three things. A mixer, which is cheap, a sipper, um, which we would also call your daily drinker, and then a celebration bottle. Okay. If you can get those three boxes checked, you're on your way. I started with mixers too. I did wild turkey and cranberry. Yeah. It's you called just a cranky. Start somewhere. And it's actually 
Oh, I'm sure. Like mixed drinks are almost impossible not to taste good sometimes. Um, any updates on the Langdon P30s? I am in the class rocking my Langdon P30. I'm at probably 10,000 plus rounds right now without a single malfunction. So mm -hmm. that's my update. You don't shoot yours. Uh, so. Well, I mean, a little harsh. I don't shoot mine that much just because there's a ton of uh, other, uh, that sounds braggy, but like th there, there's a lot there's of a other pistols. There's a ton of other options. <laughs> no, it's not even options. It's just like, man, I'm, I'm working on a lot of different pistols and pistol videos yeah. right now. So the truth <laughs> is, hey, the Langdon, my Langdon's sitting as a bedside gun right now. So it's like, yeah, I, I love it. I dig it. Actually, it's technically out here right now. I brought case, it for backup in, in case, case this you goes down. Yeah. But um, hey, I love it. I, I think it's a great gun. Great guns, man. Phenomenal I've been guns. very happy with mine. Yeah. So before we keep going, if you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, we've got uh, 1911syndicate.com. You can check that out. That is, uh, we're a real estate business, and so many people refuse to hear that message that has been said for about three and a half years. But some of you do, and you call us when you need to buy and sell houses and things like that, and we appreciate yep. that, and that keeps us in business. And then... <laughs> Look, if you want to join Patreon, you get to do some fucking cool shit, man. We're in a like, private class right now. We're in a private class hanging out with dudes. We've got people here from uh, Florida, Virginia, uh, Ohio, uh, California, Arizona, like, I mean, you know, all over the place. Like, we're, we're partying right yeah. now. You we're know? bringing the country together. It's a lot of doing. fun. You know, and there's swag and all kinds of behind the scenes stuff that we do. But I mean, like, hey, this is a legitimate hangout. We're doing a barbecue tonight, all, all kinds of fun stuff. All right, this let's pick next back up. question, I think is one of the best questions that we got. Mm. Because I wondered this getting into guns, you know. As a younger guy just getting into firearms, what do you recommend investing in? And I'd imagine both of our answers are the same. I need a quality right, a quality pistol right out the gate because you need something to conceal carry, right? That A quality pistol will check multiple boxes. I'm going to Glock 19. I would too. Price yeah. point for what you get, great. Throw on some iron sights, good to go. Next would be a quality fighting rifle. I don't need a knight's armament. I don't need, mm -hmm. give me a BCM, give me a reputable brand, mm -hmm. right around $1,500. Mm -hmm. On top of that, my caveat, you need to be able to accessorize that gun at the exact same time. What that means is a good light, a good sling, and a good optic, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I would say investing money into training. Mm -hmm. And from there, you could, the world is your oyster, right? I agree. So A solid pistol, a solid rifle, doesn't have to be the bougie shit. It probably shouldn't be the bougie shit in the world because you need to develop your taste and discover what you sure. like. Um, but then, yeah, dude, ammo training and just hit it. Like, get good with those. And through getting good with those, you'll figure out what you actually want. And you yep. can start to migrate towards that. And yeah. as being a younger guy getting into it, when you go to these training classes like we're at here, if you see a gun you want to shoot, no one's going to tell you no. Everyone's like, please shoot it. Yeah, and so that's how you can kind of test drive some stuff once you get your setup. So, yeah, there people you go. here today, they've sh people Everything. shot Nighthawks, Infinities, yeah. you know, all, all kinds of stuff. Let's see. It's a good one for you. <laughs> Is Jake still Team QD or has he switched to, to DT uh, direct thread? So, basically, quick detach suppressors or direct thread suppressors. I am still Team QD. Um, it's quick attach, not quick detach. Yeah, well, it says QD. Yeah, but it's quick attach. Put a mag through it and quickly detach it, can you? Nope. Well, QD stands for quick detach. I know, that's why it should be QA, not QD. Well, we're not going to litigate that right now because we're not in a court of freaking law of NFA items. Uh, I'm still a QD guy. Uh, I do think, hey, the vast majority of guns that I would have minus very purposeful rifles, uh, I just want a can that I can take on on and off easier and that can bounce between multiple rifles. That's sure. still my thing. Sure. Um, you know. There's arguments for both. There's arguments yeah. for both. There's no right or wrong answer, but yeah, I'm still team QD. Uh, that one's for you. Question for Chris. Oh, Top three God. reasons why Jake shouldn't reproduce. You know, funny enough, I would like to see Jake fall in love and have a child to see the human being that comes out on the other end of that. On the other side of that, I don't think there's going to be any change. And Jake knows himself better than anyone. He doesn't think he's, set, he's cut out for kids, so he's just going to be a fun uncle. So there is no reason why he shouldn't. I think he should if he wanted to. But Yeah. Uh, I'm I would, being nice today. I wouldn't be a good dad. Yeah. Uh, too selfish. No, because I think your brain wouldn't allow you to not succeed at it. You see what I'm saying? I now, think... the kid would get zero love, zero affection, but he would be a militant, strict. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Another option, I think that child might get put in a basket and sent down the river. <laughs> like Joseph in Egypt? Yes. 
Is yeah. that what you were referencing? I, well, I was uh, actually the penguin from Batman um, is where I was going with it. <laughs> I they, go biblical, biblical, he goes Batman. Yeah, they had the ugly penguin baby, know, and they I put know. it in the basket, and they sent it down the river. I think that's what I might do with a child. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, don't, you know, my house isn't friendly to kids. It's guns and alcohol and dogs, and d don't bring your kids to my house. Any desire to do World War One or World War II era 1911 videos? Yeah, I'd love it. I, I, I'd love it. But the direction I want to go with it is I, I would like to, in a perfect world, have a gun where it really becomes about the, the story behind that particular gun. Like if we could find one that had an interesting story that was attached to it from the war or something, to me that would be really interesting and a really cool way to pay some homage to that. Old 1911s and the soldiers in the greatest generation and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we would like to. And I've got a couple ideas on how we could do that. Hint, hint, Gallantons, Gallant since yeah. you've got a lot of those. Yep. Um, that would be great. Next one. Um, is it still worth getting into real estate in the current housing market? Will housing prices lower at any time? Look, we don't have a crystal ball. If we did, we'd be billionaires, right? Um, I'll, I'll give my answer. Sure. I think real estate would be exceptional at any time to get into if you are willing to work your ass off. And I'll leave it at that, regardless of the market conditions. Oh, interesting. So I'll go a different direction because I'm okay. interpreting the question of should I get into real estate? Okay, should I buy real estate? Oh, I thought this was should I become like a real estate agent? Maybe. Hey, that's your answer though. I'll okay. go the different direction, which is hey, you as a consumer, should you buy real estate? Look, here's the deal, guys. You're never going to predict the market. It's impossible. Uh, no one can. Anyone tells you you can is a fucking liar. So yes, you always should. It's a thing called dollar cost averaging. It's the same thing as investing in stocks, which would be the same strategy, which is I'm going to buy when I can buy. I might be buying low. I might be buying high, but I'm just going to buy when I can, and I'm going to ride out the clock until the asset is appreciated value, right? So yes, buy when you can can buy. Do not play the game of trying to predict the market. You're never going to do it. Okay. If the smartest people in the world can't do it, neither are you. Yeah. Buy a freaking house. I think you should also realize it's a long-term investment. Some people think I'm going to buy a house, flip it in two to three years. Yeah. But if you waited 10 years and that went up triple value, then look yep. at it as a long-term thing, not a quick, quick flip, unless that's what you're doing. Uh, for a newbie looking to get into 1911s, what's a good budget-minded starting point? We get this question a lot. Um, PRP. Uh, TRP wouldn't be budget, um, but I would say my my answer generally is I would get something from Springfield. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of like data to back that up, but I'm telling you my opinion. Sure. If I was doing that, I would probably get a Springfield that's like a relatively base level Springfield. I do believe that the Springfields, you're probably going to get a little better gun than a baseline Colt. Um, I wouldn't be personally, you know, Kimber almost starts to venture out of like a base gun you're almost at, you're not even mid you're kind of in this hybrid you know no man's land but maybe maybe a kimber i just haven't had good luck with the kimber the one kimber that i had so my answer is springfield cool i agree springfield yeah um other than firearms and whiskey what are your passions and hobbies jake um i do quite enjoy to travel okay um every like three months i try to get out of town and go do something to reset my brain and everyone leave me alone for a week uh i would not call myself a foodie but i do, do enjoy cooking i'd night. call you a foodie yeah i'd say entry level a mild sure. level of 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 foodie but really i mean my passions i get to tie into work which is uh you know i've turned into a whiskey guy and a gun guy and fortunately you know one of those lucky people in life i get to call that my my passions what i also get paid to do yeah same, you know, all my jobs revolve around my passions outside of guns and other stuff. Watches, for sure. Always a watch watch fan. Fair. Um, and to kind of bounce off of yours, travel. Um, my parents instilled at a young age traveling. How, how many countries have you been to? You never counted? 10, 12. Right. Yeah, I'm 13, at 14 countries yeah. and 49 of the 50 states. Yeah. So. Yeah, you get to see that's the pretty world, good. man. Well, it's pretty good. It shows you sometimes, hey, your, your life's actually pretty good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Uh, can you get a good pistol for $700 or less? Do more expensive pistols increase the performance of the shooter to the point where it justifies the price? Boy, that's a tricky one. Uh, can you get seven, uh, sub $700 good pistol? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. That's not even debatable. Smith, MMP, Glock, 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 PDP, like Walford. Canon, go down the list. Like, Beretta. All day, P yeah. piece of cake on that. Do more expensive pistols justify the price for the performance that you're getting? Oh boy, that one really gets tricky, man. I think as you grow in price, largely what you're getting at that point is personal preferences versus on-demand performance gains. Sure. Because um, there's a lot of people with- Until you hit a certain level. Yeah, at some point, at a high level, you sure, you might get performance gains from changing your gear. Uh, I do believe that 
right now, if I exclude, if I went 50-50 back to shooting Glocks 50% of the time, 2011s 50% of the time, the gap between my 2011 shooting and Glock shooting would get down to be pretty marginal. Sure. You sure. know? But um, Common sense would tell you that. Buy what you want to buy, but don't buy that thing thinking that it's going to make you a better shooter, because it's probably not. Okay. Yeah, that's my two cents. Um, another run on whiskey. I never got to try any. We are. <sighs> Kind of, sorta. So 1911 Syndicate clients will be getting uh, exclusive bottles that that's the only way that you can get it. They will not be for sale. Uh, they will be very small runs. This first run that we're doing right now is 14 bottles. Please no one ask if you can buy them. You can't. It's for real estate clients. That's why it's cool. Um, to sell, probably not unless someone sees what I'm saying right now and is like, hey, I have connections or I work in the alcohol distribution business. And I know- Specifically dri distribution. Yeah, distribution and uh, the retailer that would handle shipping and fulfillment on a nationwide basis. If anyone has that connection, for the love of God, let us know because we have really struck out. And so at this current moment, no, you won't get another whiskey release unless you're buying a house. Uh, who has a better palate for food? I will answer this. This is from our homie fridge operator. Yes. So love you, buddy. Yeah. Um, clearly, Jake. Listen, I eat like a fat 12-year-old. I like pizza. I like McDonald's. I like nuggets with a lot of ranch. That's about it. I have nothing else to add. That's all yep. accurate. Yeah, I eat like a fat 12-year-old. <laughs> it's 100%. 100 it. uh, taco, a lot of Taco Bell and diet, you know. Um, What's uh, next last for question. us? What's next for this? Uh, if, I, if I can, <coughs> you know, I, I, I like that question. So... What would be next for us, what you guys can expect to see on the channel is less volume of content. Historically, we've done two videos a week and you're gonna see us moving closer to one video a week. Occasionally, you'll see two. Um, but our channel, uh, per us taking pride in trying to bring you guys what we believe is good content, um, it requires more and more time, uh, not only on filming days, but on the preparation and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, we are really, a maxed out right now in terms of how much we can do and you're probably going to be getting about five videos a month our goal however is that hey of those five there's like no dead space in there it's no, like they're bangers yo, you got like bangers. five legit videos you know and uh that's where we're looking to go we really want to be the channel that um takes pride in the quality of the content does real reviews aren't in that shill category of just saying nice shit for stuff that was given to us or whatever and um, yeah, we will grow at a slower rate we historically have because there's certain choices that we make not to do clickbait content. Uh, we speak, AKA curse on camera, like we would in real life. So some of the choices we've made have slowed our channel down and we'll probably continue to do that. But I think I can speak for us, which is we enjoy what we put out. I, I wouldn't do it any other way than the way we're doing it currently. Yeah, nope. it's like I would rather grow slower and be happy then grow faster and just be like, bro, I'm just working the, the system versus yeah. like my happiness. Yeah. I value happiness more. That's just me. Which, you know, here wrapping up uh, at this class, a couple of guys asked that. And I think, you know, I asked them, I'm like, as viewers of the channel, like we've grown a little bit slower, but do you feel like the, uh, our ability to retain or build a community with our channel is, is greater and almost all of them agree. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing, honestly, to, to look out here and go, man, dude, we got people from all over the country that flew out here to, <laughs> It's humbling, uh, man. To shoot and hang out. We did yeah. dinner last night, Longhorn Steakhouse. Um, <laughs> we got dinner tonight. Yeah, we got barbecue, whiskey yeah. tastings tonight. We got a cool dinner tomorrow. I mean, it's like we're having a great time. To me, it is a, a, a bit, uh, I don't know, humbling, flattering, whatever you want to call it, to go, man, this is wild, man. This is cool. Dude, it's very humbling that dudes are willing to spend their own money to come to a class with a former dog trainer and vitamin salesman. Yeah, you know, right. So, I guess with that said, we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks to FLP for sponsoring the the video today. Firearms Legal Protection. We've got a link below. There's a code. It's 1911. Saves you like about a third off of the different services. But hey, it's uh, CCW or generally speaking, self uh, defense insurance. If you're in a legally justified uh, self defense scenario. They will cover it on limited attorney fees. You call the hotline, you actually get an attorney, not like a customer sales rep or something like that. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff there, whether you've got a family or if you're solo or if you travel or if you just stay in your state. A few different plans there. It's linked below. Check it out. That's about it, That's man. That's it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everyone that came out to the class for this weekend. And uh, we'll get after it. Okay. Let's go shoot. In 10 seconds or less, answer me there. Oh, shit, son. How many of those questions did you ask yourself? You want the honest answer? I wrote the last one. What's next for you guys? I wrote that one. Oh, did you? Yeah, I wrote that. I wrote that question because I wanted to answer it because I wanted to tell people what we're working on. <laughs>
I cheated. Le- at least the, I didn't ask any of them. I can barely read. So I like cheated on one question. And I staged it last because it's the one I wanted to end on. But also, <laughs> good on you for being honest. Crispy fucking knew. <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.